Welcome back to Think Tech. This is Life in the Law here on Wednesday at 1 p.m. And today's show is going to involve my Vice President and Chief Operating Officer for Think Tech Hawaii, Carol Mon Lee. Hi. Hi, Carol. Hi, Jay. <laughs> Very important person around here. And our host, Marianne Sasaki for Life in the Law. Hi, Marianne. Hi, Jay. She's an attorney. We're all attorneys. And that's the point of the show. We're calling this Hawaii, the next chapter for lawyers, because it seems to be an intersection of sorts, uh, that the lawyers come here and that people here are interested in what the lawyers are doing. And so it's a confluence. And it reminds me, actually, of the uh, uh, Hawaii Judici Judici Judiciary um, Museum. You know about that. Yeah, there. It's, it's in the uh, Supreme Court building. Yeah. And the it's Judiciary a Judiciary History Museum, I think mm -hmm. it's called. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. and, and the lesson of the Hawaii Judiciary History Museum is that, the, the, um, that Hawaii's history is, is an intersection with law. L law is a very important part of the development of the state. Mm -hmm. And law is likewise a very important part, since we follow the state, it's a very important part of think tech. And so we have lawyers coming, going. Many of our hosts are lawyers. We That's have true. lawyers as guests all the time. We cover, gee whiz, every kind of area of practice. And every area of practice involves some kind of top-down news. So law and the way the state works, maybe the way the world works these days, um, you know, it's, it's, it's our beat. It's our coverage. Okay, and I want to explore on the first part of the show what it is to be a lawyer. <laughs> what skills the lawyer develops, what attitudes the lawyer has, and whether they're transportable, um, and whether when you transport them they work the same way they worked before. So, uh, Carol, you were a lawyer uh, for many years. Many years. And you're a retired lawyer now, but you've, been, you've had a legal career, uh, a legal career in practicing as corporate counsel uh, in the law school as being the associate dean of a law school for many years. And now at ThinkTech, which is also kind of, mm, kind of legal. So can you talk about uh, the progression of your own career? Oh, just briefly, yes. Uh, well, as you said, I've been in practice in L.A. and in Hawaii. Uh, I've been in corporate work as a corporate attorney. And I've been a law professor teaching at UH Law School and an administrator as the uh, associate dean. But I also had a broad and I continue to have a broad interest in education in general. Uh, I used to be a teacher. Uh, in grade schools and high schools, and um, also in the nonprofit world. So I think what I bring to Think Tech is uh, a combination of all those interests and skills and can apply them to Think Tech, which is our goal is to promote civic engagement, you know, create public awareness, but in every field and in every area that touches our community. And so by having that broad exposure, I think is helpful. But the skill sets that I think I bring is, as, as a trained lawyer, as we all are, is of course in law school for three years we learn to, of course, analyze, to apply facts, to understand the law, but also to apply the law to certain situations. But being curious about a broader set of circumstances that will then therefore affect whether it's a client or a student, um, how all of those different experiences and, and, and uh, education can be applied to those situations. And so I like to think that my background actually enhances what we can do with ThinkTech. Yeah, and, and it, it goes also for the point that uh, law is a, more than a profession, it's a business sector, it's an industry. And if you practice, uh, whatever way you practice, you learn at least part of that industry. And uh, one of the reasons that I feel that uh, lateral uh, engagement, lateral hires, hires in law firms, very valuable because those people have, you know, life experience. They have experience in the community and business, and it helps them a lot. It's, they're more valuable, to, uh, in my view, to a law firm than somebody straight out of school. Okay, now you've had a different kind of career. Talk about your career. Well, I, I've practiced privately for, in large firms and small since I graduated from law school. And, you know, I was thinking about what you were saying, Carol, about um, civic awareness. I think a component of being a lawyer is being civically aware because we're officers of the court. You know, we're, we're actually public figures in some sense. Even when we're in private practice, we have a code of ethics. And so, um, and the country was sort of founded by lawyers, right? So we sort of, 
it's and it's we're a country of laws, so lawyers hold a very special place, I think, in civic awareness and civic duty in, in order to make our society better. I, I just think I do. I even though I'm a private lawyer, I'm a corporate lawyer. I do trust and estates. I don't have any public interest, you know, backgrounds or anything. But I feel an obligation to the society to make it better. I just do. Not all lawyers have that sense of obligation to society. Then they've lost it. Because, <laughs> you know, they teach it to you in law school. I mean, you study constitutional law. It's hard not to be engaged in the Constitution. It's true. It's true. But, I mean, I, there's one branch in the road is where you, you study constitutional law, you even do well on it, and then you forget all about it because it doesn't affect your life or your practice but very see, much. How many constitutional cases have you had? Uh... Well, you know, not, I haven't had myself, I haven't had too many constitutional cases, but I think of due process a lot. And in fact, they talked about due process yesterday with respect to a board meeting. And I told the board that they, they that their members of this nonprofit were entitled to due process. So, um, I mean, I bring that kind of like, you know, ramrod, ethical, I do, it's hard. I mean, maybe I won't make it, that's why I won't make lots of money ever in my life. Because I don't view it as a business. I view it as like a, a calling that, you a know. A calling. You, this is I very do. important. I do. But, but going to uh, Carol's list of skills, a sort of an, a ditty bag, an inventory of skills, what, what, what skills do you have that you need to have and that, that, that define you? I have, analyt I have e excellent analytic skills, which were honed in law school. Because in law school, they teach you to look at the law from both sides or look at a case from both sides. So I could always put myself in the other person's position now where I didn't used to be able to. I just always used to think, well, my position is right, but I don't always think that way anymore. And um, <laughs> good writing is a, is a very important part of being a good lawyer because you have to be persuasive no matter what you're writing. And, and clear. Yeah. And clear. And hopefully concise. Yes, <laughs> yeah, which is not an easy task, actually, to be all those things at once, right? You know. So, uh, Carol, I mean, yes, it's, it's valuable to have these skills, the skills that you have and, and the skills that Marianne has. But what's special about the expectations, um, the operation of think tech that makes those skills particularly important here? Well, um, we're, we are a business. We are a nonprofit. So I think that as lawyers, and of course Jay is a practicing lawyer who practiced for how many years in Hawaii? Uh, I'll, I'm going to answer that question. It, um, uh, approximately uh, 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 something over, something around 35 or 40 years. 35 or 40 years, yeah. right. So um, from a technical point of view, of course, we both, all of us understand the requirements in terms of establishing an organization, of making sure that we have our um, employment situation set up, our taxes set up, our uh, nonprofit status clean, and uh, things like that, our lease, negotiating a lease. But wouldn't they be in any nonprofit? And wouldn't many of them be useful in any business? Oh, absolutely. But in some businesses, they'd have to actually hire outside counsel. Uh, yeah, not that. many nonprofits uh, are so organized. Yeah, I mean, right. uh, they're really not. They, you know. and, and, as, as a, and as a, I will toot our own horn, all of us do what we do without pay. Yeah. Right. We are. You're a host who comes in regularly. You bring in guests. Jay and I have done work for how many years? Have you been working? You you founded Think Tech, but so yeah. many years ago. Two thousand and one. Yeah. Right. Really? Sixteen, seventeen wow. years ago. So we are in a position that we can return to the community through Think Tech um, these skill sets that we have and apply them in a broader situation. But can I follow up on something you mentioned, which is I always think of a law degree. And of course, when I was at the law school, I often talked to incoming students or people who were interested in studying the laws. Why, why would you want to go to law school? Why should someone get a law degree? And I always say that a law degree is actually value added. It does not mean that you're going to become another Perry Mason or go to court and you know win that big case. Because a law degree ends up helping in so many different professions, whether it's business or law or the nonprofit sector, uh, or even uh, entertainment or the media. And, I, and I'm just thinking now because of the current um, situation in, in, in the media that Kellyanne Conway has a law degree. Of course, oh, Michelle Obama and Hillary Clinton have law degrees. Um, Samantha Guthrie on Today's Show has a law degree. Um, it, you know, there's so many women 
and men, of course, but I'm just thinking of the women because women don't, uh, people don't typically associate uh, women as having law degrees because, as we know, it's a fairly new phenomenon. Yeah, even though we're more than half of the law students now. Now, finally. Well, when I, when I, when I, I, <laughs> no, right. You were a small fraction. You were 10% or less. Right. When I went to law school in the 70s, there were 15% women. 15. Yeah, yeah. Now is over 50. Yeah. So, so a law degree is value-added in so many different professions because it teaches you how to think and write. You know, when I, when I went to law school, and I don't date myself too much here, I graduated law school. We know it was your law. birthday, though, recently, Jay. I graduated law school <laughs> 40, 40, uh, 48 years, no, more, almost 50 years, 52 years ago. Yeah, I was going to say. Right. It was, yeah. 52 years ago, I read it. seems like yesterday. But when we, when we graduated, the idea of not practicing was abhorrent. Mm. You put all that time and, and money into studying law, and all that midnight oil, all the stress and strain, it's not easy. Nobody will ever say law school is easy no, or fun. Easy. <laughs> you know, yeah. maybe college, but not law school. And so uh, the idea then about not practicing law was, you know, that was not an option. If you went that far, you had to practice law. But it was clear what you said, and that is that it, it gave you skills you could use in any, in any walk of life. Uh, in any way, because you had to engage in a, in a society that was becoming more complex, and a society, especially in this country, that is built on law. The whole enchilada is built on law. Right, exactly. So it helps you in every way. Uh, but we didn't think of that then. Since then, I think a lot of people have gone to law school and have had the benefit of all that reading and analysis and discussion, discussion a big part of it, um, and they decided not to practice law, or they went to nonprofits or you know public public uh, causes of one kind or another, and it was not really what the classical model was. Not not in my day anyway. Um, and so and so you have lawyers out there, mm -hmm. you know, huge numbers of lawyers. Mm -hmm. I think it's the prize not to practice. Actually, don't practice. you know, I mean, it's a, it's a Can prize not them? to. Can you yeah. spot them when they don't tell you? Can you uh, see I think that analytical they're ability. You, I, I, you can tell a lawyer. You can always. I, I don't know. You can tell a lawyer. But the thing is, now the prize really isn't to practice. The prize is uh, becoming a, uh, an executive or a um, leader of you know industry of some kind or a creative person. That's. I mean that. Nobody wants to practice anymore, and because it's a grind. I mean, it's really hard. You have to do it constantly. You always have to worry about billable hours. You always have to worry about satisfying the client, who you know often they're unsatisfiable. So it's a it's a very hard job. So there's other things that are much more enticing than practicing law, you know. And so <laughs> people <fun>. do it. <laughs> they become president. That's that's far more enticing than than practicing law, you know. Now now you're a host. Uh, just a minute before we go to the break, but you're a host and you bring certain skills, and I want to talk about this in the next part of the show, do the job of host. Um, and that means engaging with people, asking them questions, listening to their answers, uh, you know, interpreting the world around us in the context of this one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two uh, kind of in crucible. Um, how does practicing law, how does law school practicing law and litigation, how do those things improve your ability to do hosting? Mm -hmm. Do you want the answer, or should we wait till the break? Oh, let's make it a cliffhanger. Okay. That's a cliffhanger. <laughs> we love cliffhangers, because then we can take a break. We'll take a short break. That's Mary Ann Sasaki and Carol Monley. We'll be right back. Aloha, everybody. My name is Mark Shklov. I'd like you to join me for my program, Law Across the Sea, on thinktechhawaii.com. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Richard Emery. I'm with co-host Jane Sugimura of Condo Insider, Hawaii's weekly show about association living. The uh, purpose of these videos is to educate board members and condo residents about issues uh, relating uh, to association living. Uh, we hope they're helpful and uh, that they uh, assist in resolving uh, problems that uh, affect the relationship uh, between boards and their residents. Each week, Thursday at 3 p.m., we bring you exciting guests, industry experts, who for free will share their advice about how to make your association a better place to live and answer a lot of very interesting questions. Aloha. We hope you'll tune in. Back One. with Pinky. Bingo, we're back. You should have been around during the break. <laughs> <laughs> we're really getting in the thick of it now. <laughs> okay, so you go to law school, you get out, 
And uh, we have to go back to your question, of course. <laughs> we go to law school, you get out, and you can't get a job. So you have options. One is you can go home and live with your parents and drive their car. Well, that wasn't an option for me, but <laughs> I suppose yes, it's an option. Okay. <laughs> the other is you can find some other kind of job, right. any job. You right. know, don't say McDonald's, but although that pays <laughs> relatively well, especially if you increase the minimum wage, um, <laughs> which you should, <laughs> which we Stop should. Stop that. It's not a political <laughs> show. <laughs> okay. So the the question is, uh, you get out of school and you, you can't can't find a job in, a, in the classical model of law firm or even government law firm. But as I said, there are many students now, many law schools promote the fact that they are training public interest lawyers or lawyers who are going into the corporate field or maybe politics who are not going to be interested in going the tradition, traditional route of law practice. That's so, true. Right. That's true. You know, the, the, in, the interesting thing is if you go that route, you're taking skills that could flower this way and they do, and, and you can, and they get narrow. Yeah, that's get, right. You know, that's right. The, the, the most, you know, the most pristine classical way to express yourself through a law degree <clears throat> is to go practice law in the old-fashioned way. And I think a, a lot of lawyers, you know, who go down the narrow path of, of corporate or something really highly specialized, public interest law, um, environmental law, good example. Yeah, I mean, in a, in an organization, in an institutional organization. They narrow their career possibilities because when they finish, it's an interesting question as to whether the classical law firm is going to see them as more valuable or less valuable. Yes, yeah, specialization in a way is um, a disservice to oneself. It may be this, a service to your firm, and you may be uh, very productive for your firm, but if you really narrow yourself down to one area, that definitely limits your options in terms of what, what you could possibly uh, yeah. do. You know, and law firms may not be interested in you because you're narrow, and they want the, may I say, the Renaissance lawyer, right? On the other mm -hmm. hand, though, you have, let's say, a specialist who's been in environmental law, maybe becomes even a, a partner true. in a private firm. That's true. But that person goes out and then starts or becomes very involved in a public interest organization and may yeah. end up being the leader, the CEO, the president, yeah, sure. who ends up bringing lots of visibility and money to an organization that otherwise um, it may have been floundering without the leadership of somebody with a law it, degree. Isn't that what we are, Carol? Yes, that is we're exactly public, what we we're are. A public interest organization. We are. Our it's goal? not practicing law, but it's practicing no. public interest. Right. Explain. <laughs> <laughs> well, if anybody uh, takes the time to look through our archives and our ThinkTech web website and just see that we run 35 shows a week on 35 different topics a week relating to everything, agriculture, technology, energy, education, um, farming, uh, you name it, uh, drones, uh, <laughs> you know, driverless cars, we politics, yeah. we could go on. But what our goal is for each of those half hour shows is to inform the public, to create an engagement and awareness that may not have been there already, may not have been there before, and that we do that through the use of these wonderful hosts, these wonderful volunteers who have experience and background and who volunteer their time to come to ThinkTech, to line up guests, to inform the public and to give um, the audience an opportunity to hear something, to hear a perspective, to hear information, to engage. And to express what Marianne was talking about earlier, their obligation to society. Right, right. To right. actually help society, right, right. the common good, yeah? When, yeah. when you asked about why go to law school, you know, I think, you know, I'm, f I'm from an immigrant family, and I, and I think there was a component of becoming a better citizen. You know, I mean, there's the, this notion of being a good citizen and participating in in in, this, in civil society is, you know, it's kind of been lost. But I, it's this kind of noble immigrants have it still. They 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 understand the United States and the meaning of the United States better than a lot of people yeah, who've been yeah, here for it's hundreds true. of years. Yeah, it's true, <laughs> right? So you know, I mean, I viewed it as a way to really become part of America, really become part of the United States. I'm going to become a lawyer. Yeah. I'm going to be a full fledged citizen. I'm going to do my duties to the to the republic okay now you remember we had a cliffhanger i don't forget that kind right. of stuff yeah and we were talking about the skills that you have had through law school and and through your classical you know uh, practice of law uh what skills help you in being a host and how much do they help you well i think you know one important thing um is that you must uh engender trust in your client your client must be able to trust you to make the best decisions possible on their behalf. And I think you must engender trust as a host as well, so that the 
guest feels free and liberated to express their opinions. If they trust you and go with you, you can go anywhere. You know, and that's, uh, that's I don't know if they teach that in law school. I guess they, they really kind of don't. But you learn that in practicing, that, that um, your reputation and your uh, willingness to be open-minded and your willingness to help, it's, it's what makes your clients trust you, you know, and it's mm -hmm. what makes the guests trust mm -hmm. you, too. You know? How about forming questions? Well, I, you know, I've always been able to do that. <laughs> I'm Italian. <laughs> They're curious. Okay. It's ethnic, it's cultural, <laughs> and it's a lawyer thing. But forming questions is a critical part of this. The whole, right. the whole deal, everything around here, it's about forming questions and right. being curious and opening issues up and thoughts up that you wouldn't otherwise hear about. And listening. And listening to the answers. It's the sausage theory. You know, the question begets the answer, That's begets right. the next question. That's why you don't have to have it. You shouldn't have it all written down. You should follow, you know, where the crucible goes. That's I think that is. makes it more interesting uh, watching, for sure. I yeah. mean, uh, people always say at the end of the show, that was really fun or that went really fast. And it's because it's interesting because we're engaged. We're, in great, we're engaged in the moment. We want to be in the moment. You didn't I want realize to be in the that you're at the wrong end of a deposition here. <laughs> I, no, I sort of did. I was like, oh, my God, they, I'm here in the middle of two, both of them. <laughs> and we, also, I, <laughs> we also have, in addition to Life in the Law, which Marianne hosts, we have uh, Governor John Wahey, who, of course, is a lawyer mm -hmm. who used to practice. Um, and we have other shows that... Mark Slav, who does a great show on international law. Mm -hmm. um, we've had other shows, maybe you can remind me of some of the other shows that we've had that have been law related. Oh, we've had uh, education, it's law related, and mm -hmm. uh, environment for sure is law related. Of course. Mm -hmm. And we've had business shows, lots of business shows that mm -hmm. are law related mm -hmm. and sometimes mm -hmm. involve lawyers. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not just the hosts, don't right. you agree? It's, it's the guests. We of have course. an enormous number of lawyers who come through here on every area. Right. Immigration comes to mind, number of immigration lawyers, uh, labor lawyers. Uh, criminal lawyers. Criminal Victor lawyers. Victor was a great guest. Uh, matrimonial thought. lawyers. I mean, all walks of life. And nonprofits. And I always think beyond just them being lawyers, it's the organization that I'm interested in because it's a law-related uh, community, uh, an organization that reaches out into the community to serve certain populations, whether it's the disabled or whether it's immigrants or whether it's women uh, who have suffered from domestic violence, but who all need law, legal services. And those are the people who then can hear and listen and engage in our show and inform the public about these extraordinary, really important issues. the public issues. would never have the opportunity to see this kind of engagement, mm -hmm. this kind of interaction, because it, it's not just what we say or what our guests say, it's the whole environment of the conversation. It teaches you so much about our world today, a world of laws. But one of the things I wanted to ask you about was Diane DiCierto. Yes. And the reason I want to ask about that, because it opens a whole new mm -hmm. area of this conversation. Mm -hmm. Uh, she's a lawyer. She's an international lawyer. She's from the Philippines, but she I think she teaches on the mainland, is it? Uh, well, she has been at UH Law School for, uh, for a few years, and uh, she's a graduate of Yale, and I, not, I think this year she's at Stanford. She's mm -hmm. a very prominent international lawyer from the Philippines. And really involved. talented, brilliant, yes. br great range of ideas. Right. And yeah. Anyway, the point, the point I, <clears throat> I make is that uh, how can you possibly, I mean, I suppose some journalists can do this, but how can you possibly engage with Diane DiCierto about international law issues that are front page, top of the line, most important cerebral issues in, in, in humanity right now? How can you engage with her unless you can understand something about international law? Uh, and being a lawyer really helps you get into that. And, and she's not the only one, but I, I think of her as, a, you know, the kind of, of world-class guest that we can get on ThinkTech and use our skills, our, you know, our orientation to, to be in the crucible with her. Mm -hmm. You know, we can actually have that conversation with her. Right. She's only one. There are others. Many. But she's, right. she comes to mind when you think about that. Uh, but it, in that vein, though, too, and that's because we have 35 different shows and 35 different hosts, who are expert in their own or have deep interests in their own areas, whether it's environment or energy. Like we have five energy shows. You know, the fact that we can explore the different facets of energy locally, internationally, the different ramifications through these different uh, topics. They aren't lawyers, but they are energy people, hardcore mm -hmm. energy. A lot of energy is law. A lot of, A lot of any, law. growing any industry is mm -hmm. law. Mm -hmm. But the other thing I think also to be discussed here 
is that we need to, I've always felt this, I was going to write a book one time, and the book was called, would have been called, How to Deal with Your Lawyer. <laughs> okay. You could still because, write that book. Yeah, you really could. Yeah. It would be a bestseller. I went to my firm at the time, uh, and, I, and I said, I'd like to write this book about how to deal with your lawyer, you know, uh, engagement agreements, retainer agreements, you know, how you, how you make sure you're not getting overbilled and whatnot. Um, and they said, don't write that book. <laughs> don't write that book. <laughs> Why? It's too much. So, you want to keep it mysterious. The, pra the practice is being something far beyond the, that of mortal men, and, yeah, and the mystery exactly, would be gone. But they just mm -hmm. didn't have a good feeling about it, so I didn't write the book. But but you know, part of what we do, especially on life and the law and all that, is we introduce the public to what it's like in the industry, in the, in the economic sector of practicing law. And they need to know because they don't know. So many of them are intimidated. They've had bad experiences. They look at the media and you know, it paints a you know, bad profile of lawyers and, and the profession. Um, and so I think part of ThinkTech is to deliver a picture of this, especially this area of activity. So people, you know, what did you say, trust? Right. You know, have, have a better sense I, of lawyers. Lawyers want to help people. I mean, you go into the law because you want to help people. You want people to be able to navigate the legal system, which is complex and, uh, and uh, inaccessible in many, in many instances. And so there really is this original impetus of, of, of service, I, I think. You know, um, the vicissitudes of business may perhaps change people, but, but essentially you, you want you your help you want to help the your client you want to help your client get what they want you know I mean that's and, and for uh, think tech to do that thanks every, everybody it's a it's a win 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 because the lawyer looks good um, we look good uh, the public look you know is, gets educated informed. on something they really need to know about but one thing I got to tell you is that we have a minute left Carol okay and it's time for you to summarize the show oh my goodness okay <laughs> Well, Think Tech Hawaii has a lot of goals and a lot of interests, and because we are lawyers in this case, we hopefully bring to you, our community, our public, uh, a level of in interest and understanding that will help you not just understand um, community issues, but bringing a perspective that perhaps you may not have otherwise um, known and that we can enjoy sharing. And we're happy to do that. And we are we happy that. to do that. We enjoy that kind of yes. contribution to the community. We do that with vigor. We see it as our obligation. <laughs> we do it with vigor. Right. And what a vigorous discussion. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Carol Munley. Uh, thank you, Mar Mary Ann Sasaki. <laughs>